I wasn't originally going to do this, but I've been seeing so many people posting and so many people posting videos, and I'm starting to realize that the bigger concern that we might have here over the next, I don't know, few weeks is probably going to be inflammation related. I'm seeing so many people stocking up on the wrong things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run to Costco right now since they're still open, and I'm gonna identify some foods that are higher calorie that would be good to have just in your pantry. We're not talking about just regular pantry staples. I wanna find calorically dense things. We're talking things like macadamia nuts, stuff like that where they're high calorie and you could essentially feed an entire family if you really needed to. So the things that I just think should be stocked up on, but also things that are gonna be inflammation modulating because if you're sedentary, you're not getting vitamin D because you're indoors and you're eating a lot of preservatives, you could be running into a pretty big longer term issue with inflammation. So let's head to Costco. I'm at the house right now. I'm gonna head over there. I'll see you in a minute. I'm not gonna get toilet paper. I don't even know if I could find some if I wanted to. But the goal here is to find high calorie, nutrient dense foods. Let's see what we find. Now this is gonna be a little bit different. Normally I have JR with me to be able to film my every move, but I'm just gonna snip what I can and film what I can. So it's gonna be a little bit cutty because I'm having to do this vlog style, which is not my normal style. It feels weird. Just an observation, there's plenty of high calorie nuts still here, which doesn't look like anybody has touched. More on that later. I have a whole separate video on that. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. People have wiped out the bread section, which kind of makes sense in theory. However, that is going to be one of the most calorically, I guess, vacant foods that you're gonna find. Um, if you are not doing a low carb diet, if you're doing some kind of you know, regular diet, I would recommend going for some kind of uh, gluten-free granola. Okay, at least that's gonna be able to get you something in the way of nutrients, but still gonna be extremely calorically dense. I'm seeing if I can find something here. Okay, here's one that I found, a grain-free granola. Check this out, flip the camera around here. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna point out with this, whenever possible, if you're trying to stock your home, if you're trying to actually get true emergency food, you're gonna to wanna to get things that do not have any form of sugar in them whatsoever. Any blood sugar spike, roller coaster ride, is going to throw things off. But I will say, this is a grain-free granola. Check out the ingredients there. We've got almonds, organic honey, pecans, toasted coconut, sunflower seeds, coconut, uh, canola, sorry, coconut oil, vanilla extract, salt, and cinnamon. In the world of granolas that are grain-free, this is one of the cleanest ones that I've seen. But one of the things that I'm looking at here the most a quarter cup is going to be 160 calories. So ordinarily, this would be super high calorie that I would not want to get at all. But in the case of trying to get calorically dense foods, this one, out of all the granolas, out of all the cereals, out of all the breads, would probably be one of the only grain things that I would recommend getting. And it's technically not even grains. So anyhow, just food for thought there. It is a little pricey though. So I'm just encouraging you, don't think bulk here. Don't just think how much volume of food can you get look at the caloric density. If you're really thinking about emergency food and prepping, that's what's gonna matter. Now, there's a couple things that my mom taught me when I grew up backpacking, right? Okay, if it's gonna be emergency food or food that you hold on to, it needs to do two things. It either needs to be extremely calorically dense, like macadamia nuts or something like that, or it needs to be something you would never touch unless it was an absolute emergency. Don't get tasty things that are gonna make you want to eat more of it. Okay, in the world of peanut butters, the world of almond butters, the world of all kinds of different nut butters, doesn't surprise me that people are wiping out the peanut butter. Obviously, it's the most cost effective, and I understand that. But let's take a look at what's in this stuff compared to some of the other options that you have, and what's gonna actually keep you satisfied. Check this out, look at Skippy. All right, sure, calorically dense. Okay, but it's also got a bunch of sugar in it. You know, that's a good amount considering how many tablespoons there are. But then look at this ingredient here hydrogenated vegetable oil. That literally means that they've taken oil, added a hydrogen molecule to it to make it shelf stable. So is it shelf stable? Absolutely. But is it something that's gonna trigger inflammation within your body and cause issues down the line? Okay, when everything blows over, when we get through all this, well, what's gonna happen? We're gonna end up with people that are very unhealthy and have long-term conditions because they're developing bad habits. I don't think that a few weeks of eating like this is gonna kill you, but you're gonna develop bad habits. So then the question comes, almond butter or nuts? In this case, I would go with the nuts though, because look at the ingredients here. Cashews, almonds, Brazil nuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, hazelnuts, pumpkin seeds, and Celtic sea salt. There's a reason behind these ingredients and why they'd be on my list in this case. Okay, it may be more expensive, but the flax and the chia is actually going to satiate you. Plus, you're getting at least somewhat of a source of omega-3s. Now, we're talking about something called alpha-linolenic alpha acid, which isn't like a true omega-3 like you would get from, say, fish, for example, but it's at least going to get you a little bit of the omega-3s that can get converted. And a hot tip, if you have a little bit of turmeric along with those omega-3s that you're getting from flax and chia, you can end up absorbing 
more of those omega-3s. We're all trying, all trying to fight inflammation here, so that's the goal. The flax and chia are a soluble fiber that are at least help you flush out some of the toxins and preserves that you're getting from some of the other food. Plus, extremely calorically dense. Definitely makes the cut. Get the nutso over the almond butter, definitely over the peanut butter. Okay, I just found something that I'm super stoked to see that people are picking up. Now, the sardines over here, definitely running on lower uh, supply here. So that means people are buying them. Uh, not as many people seem to be buying this salmon, but let me show you about the salmon because the canned salmon is actually really good stuff. One of the only times you'd be able to get wild caught salmon at this price. Check it out. Wild Alaska pink salmon, 520 milligrams omega-3s per serving. The big common denominator with a lot of the foods that we're consuming when we're looking at anything shelf stable is that it's going to be high omega-6 profile. Why? Because the shelf stable fats are usually gonna be cruddy omega-6s. That's why you don't see fish just sitting on the shelf, just not being refrigerated, right? But when you get it in a can that also is BPA friendly, you can get those omega-3s. Look at you can come out of this whole situation being healthier. There's also a couple hundred calories in each one of those cans. I mean, that's enough to, that's realistically, if we got into a really bad situation, that's gonna feed you for a day. One of those cans is gonna feed each of your family members and you're gonna be fine. Okay, now take a look at this, sardines. This is sardines in olive oil. Normally, I would recommend sardines just straight up in water so that you're getting the main benefit coming from the oil in the fish, not the oil that's added. But at least these guys add olive oil. Avoid at all costs, costs excuse me, if it comes in cottonseed oil or soybean oil, you just don't want to have it. Okay, definitely a good catch and one of the most calorically dense things that you could eat. Now let's see if we can find some more stuff. Okay, soups, chili, beans, things like that. Everyone's going for the beans really quick. My concern is if everyone switches gears really quick and all of a sudden starts having a bunch of beans, a bunch of chili, when their body's not really accustomed to it, first of all, you're not gonna absorb those nutrients. Second of all, that's a lot of havoc on your body. Uh, so let's look at the soups that we've got here. There's one in particular that I would recommend during this time. The Amy's soups, surprisingly, are pretty darn clean. Check this out. Okay, we've got the lentil soup, pretty calorically dense, 300 calories in a can. Let's take a look here. We've got filtered water, green lentils, celery, carrots, organic onions, potatoes, extra virgin olive oil. So the fact that they're using olive oil is pretty phenomenal here. Okay, and then this one, a little bit more complex. Onions, lentils, carrots, celery, extra virgin olive oil once again, garlic, balsamic. This is totally good to go. And yes, it's vegetarian. Is it keto? No, it's not, but who cares? Okay, if you're in a situation where you're just trying to get good calories in, um, the sodium is actually pretty low too, 450 per can, because these are the lighter sodium ones. So this wouldn't be a bad emergency food. People stock up on the most interesting things, like chicken stock. There's like no caloric density there. It's nothing. It's just broth. Might as well get something that has a little bit of life to it. Plus lentils, although they can be hard to digest, are going to be rich in zinc and rich in some of the minerals that you may become deficient in that can ultimately help combat some inflammation. Okay, don't bother with the soybean oil. Obviously, I doubt people are going to be loading up on that. Don't bother with the shortening. If I were to load up on one, I would say uh, probably coconut oil would be the best, which it looks like people are loading up on. Right now, it is very important that you take care of your gut microbiome. Here's what's going on. We have 100 trillion little bacteria in our gut. They dictate a lot more than what we think. If all of a sudden we are not outdoors as much, okay, we've held ourselves up, we might end up seeing a shift in that. But more importantly, if we shift our food a whole lot. We're no longer eating a bunch of greens. We're not getting the uh, butyrate, the butyric acid that we normally would get in the gut. Things are going to change. The gut's going to change. So if the gut's going to change, we're going to change. Our serotonin's going to change. Our mood's going to change. So at least if you go with coconut oil over any other oil, you at least get the monolaurin and the lauric acid conversion, which means that inside your gut, it's feeding some of the gut bacteria and has a probiotic effect. So out of all the oils, to be the most shelf stable and most long term in terms of overall health benefit inside your gut, I would probably opt for coconut oil. I'm a big fan of avocado oil, olive oil, of course, but in this particular case, I think coconut oil might be the safest thing in terms of a high calorie food to stock up on. In terms of the frozen section, I don't want to touch a whole lot on that stuff right now just because so much of the frozen stuff is just loaded with preservatives, but I think there's a few things I should touch on. I'll just grab one or two random things that I think are going to be helpful out of the frozen section outside of veggies. Always go for your fruits and veggies frozen. You're going to save some money, but also, quite frankly, they are usually higher quality. There is a study out of UC Davis that found that like frozen broccoli, frozen peas, all those things had more nutrient value than fresh or at least the same simply because they're frozen immediately. So you end up preserving stuff. So load up on the frozen veggies. At least that way you can maintain your gut biome a bit. 
One of the things I've been stocking up on at home actually is yogurt. Now Costco's yogurt is all pretty low calorie. I would opt to go for the higher dairy fat yogurt. Let me show you something. Okay, so the Greek yogurt, obviously not a whole lot of calories in it, but what we're after here isn't so much the calories, it's more so the probiotic content, but you wanna go with the higher fat dairy. Believe it or not, the dairy fat is actually quite healthy. There are studies that show that higher consumption of dairy fat ends up leading to less risk of cardiovascular disease, and it has more to do with uh, the fat being a specific kind of fat that can be used by the body, including conjugated linoleic acid, which is really good for fat loss too. More of the actual negative effects in terms of cardiovascular disease come from the oxidation that occurs because of all the sugar consumption. Now the bigger issue that I have with dairy is more so the kinds of protein that are in it. You usually wanna go for goat milk or goat yogurt whenever possible. I stock up on goat yogurt, but it's not exactly the easiest thing to get, simply because it's going to be a different kind of protein called beta caseinate uh, A2, which is much better. Sorry, I'm trying to navigate here and not crash into people. So that's usually what I wanna opt for. Bulgarian yogurt's good. Uh, regular Greek yogurt is close second. And then after that, you can start getting like almond yogurt, coconut yogurt, stuff like that. Stuff like cauliflower stir fry, but there's just no caloric density to it. It's not exactly something you want to waste freezer space stocking up on right now. Plus, it's really, there's not much nutrient value in cauliflower. You get diendol methane, you get some of the indole 3 carbonyl conversion, really just not the best. You could stock up on fruit, but I would argue that you should stock up on frozen veggies more than that. Let's see what else we can find. As for cheeses, if the cheeses are in the regular refrigerated section, I would try to avoid them. Spend a little bit more money, get the cheese in the quality age section. We'll go over there in a minute and talk about it. But let's see what they've got here. Actually, these Bell brands, these Baby Bell ones, these are actually okay. The issue with them is they're just not a good bang for the buck. But again, caloric density, but because they're wrapped in wax, they last a little bit longer. Uh, I came across the big one. People ask me about the Kirkland Signature protein bars all the time. So let's cover these for one second because I've got quite a bit of things to say. But at the end of the day, they're not all that bad. Let me just rip them apart a little bit because it's what I do. These guys have done a pretty good job at making a healthier knockoff of a Quest Bar. Let's take a look at the ingredients really quick. Okay, first thing I wanna focus on, milk protein isolate. Not the best way that I would start a protein bar. Okay, milk protein isolate means they just have straight up milk solids. Okay, whether it's the protein, but also everything else. Then we've got uh, whey protein isolate, which is great. Fiber from tapioca starch, it's going to bloat you like crazy. Cashews, I wish they would have used something uh, a little bit lower carb and a little bit less inflammatory. Uh, unsweetened chocolate, then they use erythritol, which I understand. Uh, cocoa powder, natural flavors, cocoa butter, sea salt, sunflower less fun, and stevia. Actually pretty darn clean. The only thing I don't like is the milk protein isolate in there. I just wish they would have changed that into something different or started with just plain up whey. But in terms of feeding the masses and stuff like that, it's actually a pretty good product. Now, let's see, this one's a little bit different. These are just different flavor combinations. Looks like it's the same thing. Protein blend, milk protein isolate, tapioca starch, peanut butter, erythritol, peanut flour. Pretty low inflammatory, if you ask me. Now, erythritol is gonna bloat some people. Uh, I would give this probably a good seven out of 10, if I really could. I mean, it's really not bad, but the caloric density is not bad either. So I would like to see people stocking up on these in terms of emergency food that actually tastes good. The problem is they taste good. Remember what I said, anything that tastes good should not really be an emergency food. However, if you learn to eat healthy, food that tastes good is good. Okay, I wanna check out the pure protein bars. Look at these, all the time. And it's worth mentioning at this point. Uh, milk protein isolate, same kind of thing. Whey protein concentrate. Okay, I usually run away when I see whey protein concentrate, just because that's really low quality whey. Hydrolyzed collagen, that's cool. Glycerin, they're using that as a binder. Um, it's pretty complicated. Ooh, maltitol. Okay, we don't want that. Maltitol, maltitol syrup. Fractionated, ooh, gosh, okay. This is garbage, pure protein is garbage. Definitely wanna go for the Kirkland brand in that case. I spend a lot of time with the bars. There's just more healthy things that you can get. Uh, kind bars, yes, pretty solid, but still a bunch of sugar in them. Uh, these are all just knockoffs of kind, Nature Valley, stuff you want to avoid. Okay, we just got into the nut aisle. Now, I did a full video, literally at the same Costco, talking about the best nuts to get. If I was in a true, true, serious emergency situation, I would want to be stocking up on nuts and seeds. I'd want the minerals, I'd want the zinc, I'd want things that I would really need to keep me going for a long time. And the funny, the funny thing is, there are so many nuts and so many seeds that are just on the shelf. But they're not wiped out at all. Everyone's bought the toilet paper, everyone's bought the bread, everyone's brought the rice and the beans, like they're gonna go into hiding for a decade. 
I mean, realistically, we need things that are going to keep us going for a few months or worst case scenario, like a year if supply chain is damaged, right? So let's check out some of these best ones that we should choose and some best practices when we're picking out nuts. I'm going to make this super abbreviated, but macadamia nuts definitely take the cake. Okay. They're not the highest omega-3 profile, but they're the high or the lowest omega-6, which means you can eat a lot of them if you had to live off of them, for example, and not go into a serious omega-3 imbalance. Probably the only nut that you could do that with. Plus, they have a really unique fat in them called palmitoleic acid, which is an omega-7, which makes omega-3s more readily available in the body. So highly recommend that. Uh, pistachios, also not a terrible choice. Uh, they're a little bit higher carbohydrates. So yes, you can develop a little bit more of an issue there. But one of the things I'm concerned most about is these have, if you can see this, yeast extract, which is MSG. So they basically have added MSG to those, so you eat more of them. I don't like that. The Kirkland pistachios are just not a good bang for the buck. Like you're gonna spend, let's see, 9.26 per pound. Um, let's see what the ingredients are here. I mean, good ingredients, just pistachios and sea salt. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't be terrible. I would just opt for something that's a little bit more nutrient dense. Uh, pumpkin seeds, for example, extremely high in zinc. So one of the best things that you could eat and 8.6 per pound, so a little bit better there. Uh, organic sprouted pumpkin seeds, which means they're sprouted, which means they're gonna absorb better within your body. Sprouted means they've soaked them in water for at least 24 hours to where it breaks down what's called the phytic acid. It breaks down what are called the anti-nutrients, so you can actually utilize the nutrients. Let me explain something here. There's a reason why when you look at animal droppings, you see pieces of nuts and seeds in them. It's because the nuts and seeds don't break down. They have anti-nutrients that are designed to not digest so that they get passed through the feces and can continue to sprout and continue to grow. It's just a natural process. It's so funny the way people look at me when I'm holding up a phone talking to myself, but I'm used to having a cameraman with me. So that's what you want to get them sprouted. Sprout is going to allow that process to uh, not occur as much. You can actually assimilate them and absorb them a little bit more. So the next best one, let me show you real quick. You want to buy them in the baking section because that way you're not paying for all the extra roasting and you're not paying for all the extra marketing and everything that goes along with it. Pecans, high omega-3, walnuts, high omega-3. I would say pecans are a little bit easier to digest, so I usually opt for them. There's something here that does make me feel kind of warm and fuzzy inside. It gives me just a nice cozy feeling, and that's this. Check this out. The junk food aisle, the cracker aisle, actually quite vacant. People know not to just buy a bunch of sugary snacks, which is really refreshing to see. What's interesting is that they're flocking to things that are seemingly healthy, which is exactly why I'm doing this video. I want to kind of debunk some of the common stuff out there where people are just making the wrong choices. The nice thing is when we look at the actual legit just cracker and cookie and sweet aisle, well, people aren't rating the stuff here. Just a really refreshing thing to see. I think we're actually starting to make an impact. This is really cool. One of the things that people tend to overlook because it's just generally seen as unhealthy is going to be pre-cooked sausages. Okay, there's some good options now. Okay, There's good ways to preserve things without adding well preservatives. So high calorie foods that are gonna feed your family for a while where you don't have to stock up on garbage. Let me show you this one. Sabatinos. I've actually never personally tried the flavor of this, but the ingredients are pretty solid. Check this out. Okay, organic chicken, organic basil, and then 2% or less of the following. Roasted garlic, onion powder, garlic powder, sea salt, organic vinegar, organic black pepper, oregano, and calcium aginate in the casing, which is perfectly fine. That's just a derivative of calcium, essentially. So really, really clean. Now, the only thing that's a bummer is the sodium content is very, very high. If you're doing a low-carb diet, that works out because, yeah, you can keep your mineralization. But what I like is 160 calories for a link. Okay, if I had this and a handful of macadamia nuts, I could maintain in a ketogenic state for a number of weeks before I would have a nutritional deficiency of any sort. So this brand is really, really clean. Then you compare it, I haven't even looked at this one, I'm just gonna guess. Um, okay, pork, dehydrated pineapple, eh, sugar, of course. Yeast extract, there we go, MSG, gotta be careful there. Citrus extract, that's not a big deal. Paprika, yeah, straight up MSG. Okay, we don't wanna be having that. It's one of the worst things you could have right now during this time. Normally I would say to try to get like a, a wide diversity of nutrients in terms of protein, right? Try to get your chicken, try to get your beef, try to get your pork, and that still stands. But I will say you're probably gonna get more caloric density from beef right now than you would from chicken. If you have chicken and you're getting high calorie chicken, it means you're getting chicken that's high fat and chicken fat is much lower quality than say fat from beef. So I just want you to keep that in mind. If you're not normally a beef person, it might be the best way for you to just kind of satiate yourself. However, I don't eat a ton, ton of beef 
this is a good time for me to stock up on beef because I will only eat it if I really, really need to. Otherwise, I will opt for some other things, right? Let's see what else they've got over here. Like their organic section. Oh, perfect. Okay, these are a great option. If you had to choose between wisps, moon cheese, and these Parmesan crisps. Okay, these are 14 little bags, so you're paying more money for packaging. Moon cheese, although it's clean, it's just cheddar cheese, which leaves a lot to be desired, okay? Now, it's not terrible, but then when you look at Parmesan crisps, we've got Parmesan cheese. Ooh, wow. Okay, I just got debunked. I was expecting this to be good. Okay, here's the thing. I would opt for Parmesan because Parmesan is a much cleaner cheese, lower lactose, easier to metabolize, aged, better enzymatic function. Uh, Parmesan in general is really good in the body. But these guys, oh, I'm disappointed. Made in Sonoma. That's literally where I grew up, too. I'm from Sonoma. This kind of makes me disappointed, Sonoma Creamery. Hopefully, you, someone from your company sees this and you can make some changes. Why do you have to put brown? Why do you have to put a grain in there? Not only one grain, but you put organic oat bran, organic quinoa. Oh, gosh. God, that just frustrates me. Keto people just would be really upset with that. In this case, I would probably go for the moon cheese, because check this out. 23.5 servings per container, 70 calories per serving. Six to seven little nuggets of these guys, 70 calories. Okay, not that you want to load up on cheese for your calories, but again, why aren't people grabbing that? It's not even a bad price. Nine bucks, and that's 23 and a half servings. You have to look further than just how much you're getting in terms of volume, okay? If it was a giant bag for $8.99, I'm sure people would just be buying it all like crazy, but they're not reading how many servings are actually in it. Try to stay away from the dried fruit, okay? Just going to be a big insulin spike. And something to note about dried fruit, obviously it's concentrated fructose. And let's learn about fructose. Fructose does not get stored as muscle glycogen. Okay, most carbs that you eat can store in your muscles. Like you go for a run, you work out, you eat some carbohydrates, it's gonna store in your muscles. And that's fine, it's not gonna go to fat. Fructose rides a different bus in terms of metabolism, okay? It gets into the liver, but we can only hold like 35, 40 grams of fructose in our liver, and then it spills over and turns to fat. But what happens when you have a concentrated amount of it in some kind of uh, like a, you know, dried fruit, right? Well, you're gonna have like two of those snacks, and it's gonna start going into de novo lipogenesis and go through spillover. So anyhow, just something to think about. Okay, so cured meats, bacon, salami, things like that. There's a few things you need to know. Pork fat isn't the best fat in the world, but if it is the saturated pork fat, it's a little bit better than, say, the uh, polyunsaturated fats that are normally in pork. Pork has a high degree of those polyunsaturated fats, and polyunsaturated fats, although good, they are very, very fragile. So I'm going to show you something. You have to pay close attention to the visual here. In an instance of salami with pork. See how it's all marbled in there? Okay, it's tough to tell, but you know, usually when you're getting a cut that's heavily marbled that way, it's usually also high in the polyunsaturated fats. Now we can see for sure here. Yep, look at that. Okay, here's a good way to tell. Seven grams of total fat, two and a half of which are saturated. That leaves us with four and a half grams of fat that are probably a low quality polyunsaturated in this case. Now, this is a total guess here, so let me see. But if I go with like a, uh, a Parma ham or a prosciutto, haha, -ha, there we go, right? Three and a half grams, one and a half grams of which is saturated fat, so I'm left with, well, it's a little bit better, not a whole lot better, but still, what that means is that we have more of the saturated fat and less of the polyunsaturated fat. So just quick math that you wanna do, you always wanna have a higher ratio of saturated fat compared to the remainder. That's going to help you out in determining the healthiest quality meat there. Similar thing applies for smoked salmon. We think just based on theory that like smoked salmon's gonna last for a long time, but it doesn't. It actually goes bad pretty quick. Like if I'm looking at them right now, it's mid-March, this is expiring at the end of March. It's not that great. But there, let me show you a little something what you need to pay attention to either way with smoked salmon if you are going to freeze it or anything like that. Try to avoid the Norwegian stuff. Yeah, that's been shown to be pretty contaminated. What I want is wild Alaskan sockeye. Okay, the reason I want wild Alaskan sockeye, higher in what is called astaxanthin. What makes it pink is actually an antioxidant. So think about this. Salmon are swimming upstream crazy fast creating a lot of oxidative damage within their bodies, okay? Exercise creates damage, and we usually have to fight it. Well, they have to create their own built-in antioxidant to help defeat that, which means that antioxidant preserves the polyunsaturated fats that are in sockeye. Whereas something like this, see how it's all pale compared to this? You'll always wanna go for the sockeye, okay? And come on, get real, when it's smoked, it's so salty anyway, you don't taste the difference, okay? This one's a little fattier, but what good is fat? if it's not gonna get you anywhere, right? Okay, the fat, con I'm not gonna look. It's a higher fat content in that than it is in that. Definitely go for the wild sockeye. 
uh, expiration on this. Let's see. April 16th, so it lasts longer too. So I could have that in the fridge for a good month, or I could just put it in the freezer and have it for a while. Just something to note there. Quick touch on the cheese section, okay? You wanna get cheeses obviously that are gonna last for a while, but you also wanna get cheeses that are gonna be lower beta casein A, uh, A1, okay? Which is complicated sounding, but we want better quality proteins in our cheese, okay? We want good quality stuff aged. So we wanna go for goat cheese, we wanna go for blue, we wanna go for feta. Let me just show you what we got here. Costco has a pretty good deal on feta crumbles, okay? And these are gonna be good through June 19th. There's a high sodium content in here, but also these are pretty caloric, okay? One ounce is gonna give you 70 calories, okay? So this is great. Now this isn't sheep's feta, but still pretty solid stuff. I would definitely go for feta as an option. Crumble gorgonzola would be a good one too. Uh, blue cheese depends how long it's been aged. I wouldn't really recommend stocking up on it right now, but I would go for like some aged cheddar, okay? This stuff, let's see. Reading up here, USD Organic. Yeah, I mean, we got a one ounce cube. It's gonna be 120 calories. Yep, there we go. Cows that are free to roam and grass fed. That is super, super important here. We definitely wanna be paying attention to that. Now I will say once again, anything you can find with a wax coating is gonna preserve and last longer. So, wow, I don't even, let's see. Memolete, I think I'm saying that right. Make salt, lactose starters. Okay, this one's pretty aged too, so that's not a bad one. Okay, pass on those. Okay, I think now we're getting into some of the other stuff. Okay, so these are like more of the, ooh, here we go, spreadable goat cheese. Sorry, this is just cool. Um, calories here, one ounce, 70 calories. This is gonna be one of the higher quality cheeses that you could get here. Might be the only goat cheese that I see. Oh no, we got this goat cheese right here. Wow, that's a bargain. Six fifty nine dollars for two things of goat cheese, fresh goat cheese. Hang on, I'm losing my headphones here. That's how you know this is real. Okay. Calories, 80 calories for one slice, which is about one ounce. Pasteurized goat's milk, salt, bacterial culture, and microbial enzymes. Definitely would get this. Now, also, it's good until July 5th because it's in this package, right? You could also freeze it. And the nice thing is goat cheese doesn't denature as much when you thaw it out. Other cheese gets really weird if you freeze it and then thaw it out. Goat cheese, just for whatever enzymatic reasons, seems to hold itself together. Unfortunately, fish is just it's a bad time. People are still wiping it out because I think they're going to freeze it. But I don't know if I'd recommend just getting a whole lot of fish right now. It's probably just not the best time. Uh, corned beef. This is interesting. It looks like no one's going to be celebrating St. Patrick's Day right now. Let's see what else we got in the way of beef and stuff. Remember, stock up on the beef, go easy on the chicken. If you are gonna get the chicken, get the chicken breasts, okay? That way you're not loading up on the chicken thigh, which I know is higher calorie, but this is all about getting the right calories. If you're gonna eat calorically dense foods, don't just eat any calorically dense foods. Get the calorically dense foods that are actually gonna give you some value. That's what's important here. Anyone can grab a Snickers and eat something calorically dense. I'm trying to teach you the right calories here. Costco has some good options when it comes to beef, but this would probably be my favorite. It's the bison. It's $7.99 a pound technically, which is pretty steep. But the nice thing about bison is it's generally grass-fed, grass-finished, which plays a big, important role. So again, with beef, I would usually recommend going leaner. And the nice thing is, is that grass-fed, grass-finished naturally is leaner, believe it or not, but it's also a higher omega-3 content. So again, trying to control inflammation, trying to not have an issue with inflammation as you're changing up your diet rapidly. So trying to go for the bison, that's probably the best beef source at Costco right now. Um, let's see, 11 grams of fat, four of which is saturated, which means you're left with you know, roughly seven grams of mystery fat. Could be monounsaturated fat, could be polyunsaturated fat, but really caloric density, you're gonna get the most bang for the buck there. Um, I don't recommend getting big fatty steaks unless you absolutely know where they're coming from because the fat is where the toxins and everything is stored, and the grains, the soy, everything they consume. For those of you that are interested, I did put a link down below for ButcherBox. That way you can get grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivered to your doorstep. They are still shipping during this time. I just ordered like 25 cuts myself. So you can use the link down below. There's a special discount. And especially right now, because things are just a little bit insane. So you can use that link and you can get grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivered to your doorstep, whether it's beef, chicken, fish, scallops, uh, pork, you name it. So go ahead and use that link. I do have a good partnership with them. They are a supporter of this channel. They are a sponsor of this channel, full disclaimer. 
but I am saying right now and during these kind of hectic times, it is a good way to stock up on some of the frozen meat. It might be better than braving Costco and getting some of the lower quality meat that you're generally gonna find at any grocery store. So highly recommend you check them out uh, down below in the description after you finish watching this video. Save a couple bucks that way too. Let's jump to pork for a second. Uh, once again, the thing with pork loin is you can usually, or pork chops too, you can usually trim off the fat. So look at, see how the fat is in a nice thick layer? That's what we want. That way we can trim it off and we're not getting a lot of marbling. We can get leaner cut of meat. The protein within pork is actually really good. It's just the fatty acids that we're not a big fan of. Uh, ribs, again, try to avoid not the best kind that you'd want to be bringing in. Um, lamb, not exactly the most cost effective thing to be bringing into your house right now. I will say though, lamb, mutton, although I'm not the biggest fan of it ethically, um, is one of the best fatty acid profiles that you could find. Okay, let's go take a quick look at the ready to drinks and the protein powders really quick because I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to stock up on right now. Again, if you're trying to maintain a really healthy lifestyle, you're working out at home, doing what you can, um, that's gonna be the last thing that I check out before we head on out. This looks familiar. I think we did a whole video on this. You guys can check out the whole entire protein video that we did at one point. Okay, the ready to drink liquid proteins at Costco are not really good to go. Let me point out the ones if you were gonna grab one that I would recommend. Okay, the grass-fed clean protein shake. Let me flip it around and show you. They call it a grass-fed protein shake, but I'm just gonna touch on this really quick. Grass-fed milk protein concentrate. Okay, again, just in case you haven't watched my videos before. We want isolate, not concentrate. Concentrate means that they've just concentrated the protein and they haven't isolated any of the good quality way. Then we use agave, which is pure fructose. Remember what I told you about fructose? Uh, fructose is sketchy because it goes straight to the liver and it can only hold, the body can only hold so much. High oleic sunflower oil, not the end of the world. Anyhow, the point is relatively low quality, but believe it or not, I would opt for the plant-based one if you were looking for an RTD. Um, you know, not a bad thing to stock up on just in case. I just don't know if the price is really conducive. Okay, we've got filtered water, pea protein, alkalized cocoa, high oleic sunflower, which I have other videos on, it's really not that bad. Rice bran, not the best. Trisodium phosphate is okay. Tripotassium citrate's okay. Gel and gum, monk fruit, that's a plus. Uh, vegetable blend, actually pretty darn clean. So for, out of all the RTDs, and I've talked about this in other videos, this Orgain RTD is not bad. Uh, still not the best though, and definitely not the most cost effective. I'm gonna save you guys a bunch of time. The Kirkland brands, the Premier brands are both garbage when it comes down to the RTD. Let's look at some powders really quick. Okay. Um, the Orgain Keto, a lot of people talk to me about this one. It's clean, it's just, you're getting collagen proteins. You're not getting like actual protein protein, which I'm not opposed to collagen, but in the case of really trying to, I don't know, maintain muscle mass during this time, not really the go-to. Okay, a quick whey protein 101. You always want whey protein isolate, not whey protein concentrate. So we have two very similar ones here, I'll show you. We have whey protein isolate, and we have whey protein isolate as the primary source, <laughs> which means, check this out, protein blend, whey protein isolate, whey protein concentrate, oh, and whey peptides, natural artificial flavor, less than acesulfame potassium, which is highly insulinogenic, yeah, does spike insulin, causes a cephalic insulin response, then we have sucralose, which is gonna destroy your gut biome. You need to be avoiding sucralose right now, and it's not the time. But then we have whey protein isolate, same exact brand, which is whey protein isolate, cocoa press, processed with alkali, natural flavors, which is questionable still, but lecithin, salt, stevia leaf extract, and xanthan gum. Infinitely cleaner, significantly cleaner. Go for this one, and right now, uh, as of March, 21 bucks or 22 bucks. That's a really good deal. This combat, it tastes amazing, but it's total garbage. Take a look at it. Microfiltered protein blend, whey protein concentrate, isolate. Definitely not good. Uh-oh. I think someone broke into the cigarette container. Okay, that was loud. Sorry about that. So anyhow, then when we get look at the plant-based ones, I'm going to make this quick here. Let me show you. Um, the organic probiotic one is not bad. Um, organic protein. We've got uh, pea protein, ground rice protein, chia seed. And it's got a creamer base, which is made from organic high oleic sunflower oil that's been dried. All that high oleic is, is it basically means that they've taken the oleic acid, which is quite a good component, out of some of the uh, polyunsaturated fats to make it a uh, more stable, shelf-stable fat is all they've done. But it's much better than hydrogenated. I'll explain a little bit more about what it is. Okay, so oleic acid is found in uh, things like olive oil, avocado oil, stuff like that. You're going to see it a lot. Okay, it's very, very good for you. What they'll do is they'll take 
those components and they'll industrialize them to basically make a certain oil, even soybean oil, higher oleic. So what they've done is they've taken a polyunsaturated fat that would normally be very unstable and they've made it a monounsaturated fat. This is a good thing, but it doesn't really make it a better fat. Soybean oil is still soybean oil. And even the studies that take a look at people that consume high oleic soybean oil versus regular soybean oil, they still have all the negative health effects, all the issues. The only thing that changes is a slight change in the instance of obesity rates. And it probably just has to do with the fact that maybe they're not consuming as much. Anyhow, it's just something to note. So really, the whey protein is gonna come down to that optimum nutrition whey protein isolate and probably the basic orgain probiotic blend and possibly the orgain plant-based ready to drink would be the only high calorie ones that I would really recommend. Take your protein powder and add some coconut cream to it. In fact, that's one more thing that I wanna show you to stock up on here in the canned food section. I almost forgot. It would have been a bad one if I forgot some of the stuff in the canned food section. And the thing is, is for those of you that are watching this entire video, you get the sweet treat because this is a big one, right? Okay, mayonnaise at Costco is all soybean oil. Again, trying to fight inflammation, right? Soybean oil, boom, not what we want. Sometimes you'll see a Primal Kitchen here, but it doesn't look like they have it. A lot of their canned goods are just gone. Well, yeah. Well, let's find something else instead. If you do want to give yourself a high calorie treat, at least these 4505s are really good, really good clean pork rinds. They're just easy to eat a ton of them. Uh, pork rinds, salt, coconut palm sugar, which is a little bit of a bummer because you never really want to be combining carbs and fats. But anyhow, I had to show you something since they were out of what I wanted to show you, which was coconut cream. You see, if you get those big cans of coconut cream, or not even a big can, but a can of coconut cream in the baking section, like for Thai food, or coconut milk in a can, super high caloric, uh, excuse me, high calorie, very caloric, but also high in the medium chain triglyceride. Same stuff we're getting from coconut oil. You can mix a little bit of that with your almond milk and it's gonna make your almond milk taste almost like whole milk. It's delicious. But you're also getting that probiotic effect, that lauric acid, the monolaurin conversion within the gut. It's gonna help support that gram positive bacteria. Again, all about gut health. That's gonna be how you maintain your levels of, you know, well, good immune balance that you're not immunocompromised and that your inflammation levels aren't flying through the roof. Anyhow, I'm gonna head out of here and uh, line's a little bit too long for me to grave right now, but I at least wanted to share some good content.